Has anyone, uh, has anyone familiar with his Normal Accidents book? Really, very, very simple book, very fantastically written. It's got three case studies looking at um, uh, techno-social systems, sort of highly complex techno-social systems, looking at nuclear industry, uh, the space industry, uh, aeronautics, and um, uh, chemical plants as well. And his basic premise was that as any technical system grows in complexity and connectedness, the probability of cascading failure increases. Why? Right? Function of a couple of different things. One, it has many, many interacting parts that are tightly coupled. So you have something that happens all the way over in Shanghai affects us here in London. So you have a lot of different inputs to any given part, and they're tightly coupled, and that action here has strong impact here. And they actually become so large that they're, they're beyond human comprehension. Like, no one really knows what's going on at any given point. So you have automation, you have sort of uh, safety protocols and these types of things, but no one's able to actually track everything going on simultaneously. And the premise there is that you have any random, little random action, a stochastic uh, change, the random like part breaking down, has the potential to cascade and escalate throughout the system to produce catastrophic failure. Um, I've modeled this in a little a really simple uh, model just looking at a sort of randomized graph. So we have here, let's just say, these little gray dots are just nodes, and the number on them represents uh, the amount of stress that they, that they have. And the color, as I, as I run this, the color is going to, um, the color is indicative of the amount of stress they're experiencing. If they, after they pass a certain threshold, the node will explode and it sends its stress to everyone else that's connected. So in every unit, it connects to someone else at a random probability, or a given probability, uh, and then, so you have complexification over time, sort of indicative of, of Perot's argument, and then you have just random buildup, right? And at any given turn, there's, there's a random chance of one unit of stress occurring there. So let's just see what happens here. So you see that, it might be hard to see, but we've got little connections going on behind, behind the screen. So things are starting to connect, this graph is showing the number of links here against the number of disasters. The disaster occurs when one uh, cell explodes. So everything's going well, we're complexifying, we're complexifying, we're complexifying. You know, if one were to model sort of return on investment or something, it's going through the roof. Everything's great. And then we're starting to get a little bit of a buildup of stress here. So you can see there's a lot of red in the system. Um, everything's going along until at a certain point, Boom, right? You pass this critical threshold of connectivity where in which just a single iota of additional stress cascades and overloads everything else. Because you have, uh, you have a, a buildup of stress endemic to the system, and everyone's kind of managing it on their own in, in more complicated models. And, you know, this is a toy model, like they um, said, the labs and the guys in, in, in the States, they do this with, with real agent based systems using real data on um, um, supply chain management and stuff, you know electricity grids, the kind of things that matter for people's lives, right? But the principle is the same. Right? Once you pass a, thir a certain threshold of connectivity, the smallest little change can, can, can cascade through the entire system uh, and cause catastrophic failure if the level of stress is built up to such a degree. Now, one would argue, you know, this, you can play around with this. You sit, let's play around with the density or the probability of linking to a neighbor or the amount of, st the, the, the amount of stress that one can, can absorb before exploding. Um, and what you find is that if you increase the stress threshold of each agent, the time to collapse increases, so you can go longer and longer and longer, uh, and, but at the end of the day, you still get the same thing, because the stress is just going to ultimately build up to the stress threshold and then explode. Uh, this... this t um, Perl's work has been validated in a couple different studies. The most interesting one is looking at uh, petroleum refineries in, in the States. And he has this, this grid uh, of kind of the degree of complexity of a technical system and the, the strength of the coupling. Is it loosely coupled uh, in the case, uh, or tightly coupled? So examples here, like a, a low complexity, loosely coupled situation is like an, an assembly line, right? You know, yes, mm, what I do affects you down, down the road, but um, it's not so, so tightly coupled as, let's say, like a, a nuclear power plant. Or a very complex situation like a university that's loosely coupled. You know, we might all be doing our, our little complexity dialogue here, but uh, you know, maybe I don't know that somebody over at UCL or in the other division is doing his own, his or her own thing as well. So what, they, what this research did, uh, Wolf in 1997 looked at uh, chem chemical refinery plants and petroleum plants in the U.S. and said, okay, is there any relationship between Perot's uh, classification scheme here and the amount of incidents? 
uh, catastroph catastrophic incidents that occur where someone dies, there's a chemical leak, etc. RQ stands for, uh, help me out here, OSHA, Occupational Safety, so, uh, reportable quantities. So if you have a chemical spill or something, it's essentially the number of accidents per year. Uh, and what you find is that these loose, loosely coupled low complex systems have uh, about a third of an accident per year, where the uh, the, the more the more um, tightly coupled but still not very complex refineries have got an accident every year, and the really complex uh, tightly coupled systems have uh, an, uh, ten times more accidents. Right, so you have about ten accidents per year um, in this in, in these complex technical systems. And then the, the kind of secondary thing is this TCIR is uh, time between. I can't remember the exact acronym, but it's essentially the number of accidents divided by the number of man hours spent at each factory. So it's sort of like a normalized measure of safety, you know. And what you find is that the, the normalized measure of accidents per year is the same between this loosely coupled simple system and this highly coupled complex system. And so what's going on there? And it turns out that these very, these very complicated refineries are so complex and that they require a high level of automation and you have much lower staff. So actually, you're having more, uh, more accidents because it's quite complex, but the normalized ratio is similar because you have less people, right? Now the other interesting thing that came out of this study is that 70% of the catastrophic accidents occurred in companies that were having poor financial performance over the period of the study, right? So people sort of putting off maintenance, putting off uh, uh, safety prot protocols, doing shorter shifts perhaps, etc., which uh, increases the probability of, the, uh, of an accident occurring. So what's the lesson of this first sort of approach to, 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 to collapse the social systems? Basically, the more complicated it gets, especially if it's automated, involves optimization on a single or a few variables, and requires human oversight, the more likely it is to fail. So takeaway message, tight optimization in a dynamic environment, bad idea.